Thanks for listening to this teaching from City of Life Church. Check out www.col.tv for more great teachings, service times, and information on upcoming events. Now, let's join the service already in progress. Amen. We worship a God who's the same today, yesterday, and tomorrow. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm the God of Jacob, whose love endures through generations. I know that you will keep your covenant. I'm calling on the God of Moses, the one who opened up your Now to do the same thing for me. Oh God, my God, I need you. Oh God, my God, I need you now. How I need you now. Oh rock, oh rock of ages, I'm standing.
executive pastor here, and I have the privilege of sharing the word with us today. And we're going to talk all about how to stand firm, even through the trials and the difficulties of life. Amen? You guys are ready. I love it. Well, grown-ups, I have a request of you. Because this is Family Sunday, I might be using some different language than I would on a typical Sunday. So I'm going to invite you to kind of step into some childlike faith, because that's how we enter the kingdom of God, right? We're going to have some childlike faith. We're going to have fun together today. We're going to explore the word together today. But grown-ups, can you do that with an open heart? Yeah? Kids, can I hear the kids in the room? Do y'all need some sugar? There you go. Kids, are you ready for your spiritual muscles to grow today? Ooh, who wants to be stronger? Yes? Awesome. We're going to have a good time. Let's dive into the word together. Today, we're going to explore our text verse from Ephesians chapter 6. We're going to read verse 10 and verses 13 through 18. I'm going to read, um, you can follow along on the screen, but the first verse, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10, says, Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Can you turn to someone, I don't care how old you are, turn to the person next to you, make a nice muscle. Yeah, group participation, I love it. Turn to your neighbor and say, Be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Verse 13. Therefore, put on every piece of God's armor so that you will be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Then, after the battle, you will be standing firm. Say, standing firm. Stand your ground, putting on the belt of truth and the body armor of God's righteousness. For shoes, put on the peace that comes from the good news so that you will be fully prepared. In addition to all of these, hold up the shield of faith to stop the fiery arrows of the devil. Put on salvation as your helmet and take the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the spirit at all times and on every occasion. Stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere. Today, we're talking about I'm still standing. Amen? Let's pray. Would you bow your head and close your eyes? Lord, thank you so much for the privilege to be able to look into your word and to learn how you instruct us. God, every time you give us instructions, it's not because you want to be mean or withhold something from us. It's because you want us to be safe and healthy and live a wonderful life. Lord, we know that there are storms that happen in life, but we thank you that you have given us a guide for how to stand strong, even in the battles that we all face. Thank you for being with us in the battle. Thank you for being with us here today. We love you. In Jesus' name, everybody said? Amen. Amen. So we're talking about standing firm in our faith. And this is important no matter what age we are because there are different things in life that challenge us in our faith, that challenge us in our belief, that challenge us in our walk with God. And so this is why we're talking about this. It's really important to talk about perseverance in the faith journey because we aren't called to just profess faith for a little bit. We are called to be children of God for all of our days and to walk out our faith journey even when life gets challenging. So we must learn how to stand firm. 
Can you look at your neighbor, stomp your feet on the ground if you can reach it? Say, stand firm. We're going to talk about standing firm. Why is this so important? Well, I have a really important question for everyone in the room. Have you ever been to an indoor trampoline park? Ooh, super fun. Okay, so some of them have these cool foam pits, and you can do battles. So if you can picture with me a balance beam across a huge foam pit, and you get the huge foam gladiator type um, weapons, if you will, but they're very safe. And you can stand on the balance beam and battle each other to see who will win. And it's really hard because it's hard to stand firm on a narrow balance beam. It's really easy to get knocked off by your opponent and fall into the foam pit. What would be different if we were standing on firm ground? We probably wouldn't fall as easily. And life doesn't always offer us firm ground. We aren't guaranteed sure footing or an easy path. But the word of God teaches us how can we stand firm? How can we create a solid foundation around us? Even in a world that's constantly shifting and changing, we can all stand on the solid ground that the Bible provides. I really appreciate the opening verse in our passage. Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Because in all transparency, my tendency is to try to be strong in myself. Be strong, Amanda, in your own power. Be strong with your work ethic. Be strong in your emotions. Be strong with staying on top of your to-dos and your chores. Be strong no matter what it feels like. Just keep going. Just keep pushing. It'll all work out. And I think it's a beautiful value to have strong work ethic, to be excellent, to steward your time, to steward your money, to steward your talent. I believe God asks that of us. But the word is giving a very clear directive to not be strong in your own power. And that's really convicting because I think that's what a lot of us tend to do, especially in this Western world of trying to do it on our own and be independent. Be strong in the Lord's power. Personally, I take a lot of comfort in that because the Lord never gets tired. The Lord's never blindsided. He's never shocked. His power and his strength is perfect and it's always available to us. We don't have to be strong on our own, and I'm so grateful for that. Be strong in the Lord's power. So how do we learn how to be strong in the Lord's power? Well, we have to put on the armor in order to stand firm. So today we're gonna explore five ways to stand firm all together. The first way is to stand firm in truth. So if you're taking notes, go ahead and write that down. Look at your neighbor and say, stand firm in truth. And this is from our text verse, Ephesians 6, 14, if we can put that up. We're going to look at that. It says to put the belt of truth, put that on. Put on the belt of truth. And if I'm being honest, I was really curious about this. I've kind of been curious about this my whole life. But I was like, why is it a belt? It doesn't like sound really tough. Like, okay, yeah, I don't want my pants to fall down in battle. That would be awkward. But like, why is truth a belt? And I thought about it. A belt surrounds you completely. A belt is very close to your body. And a belt is what allows you to hold all the other necessary weapons in the battle. And so if we don't have truth... We won't be able to hold on to all the other weapons God asks of us. And if we aren't surrounded by truth, if it's not close, maybe we have truth in one area of our life. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm truthful in church. Mm-hmm. I tell God everything. But we're not truthful with our parents. Ooh. Or we're not truthful with our boss. Or we're not truthful with our spouse. We aren't surrounded by truth. Truth has to be so close to us and cover us on every side. And that's not something that God forces us into. He's saying, you have to put on the belt of truth. You have to surround yourself and live a life where truth has to be protected. 
We have to put on the belt of truth. It supports us and it holds our weapons. And when we learn, we learn the word of God, his truth surrounds us. And when we're in a battle, there are opportunities for us to give in to lies. There are opportunities for us to be deceived. There are opportunities for us to be drawn away by things that are not truthful. But when we are surrounded by the truth of God, our discernment grows and we can more easily see, oh wait, that's a tactic of the enemy because that's not true. Oh wait, that's not something I need to have in my life because that's not true. We will know the truth when we surround ourselves with the truth. So what is an example of surrounding yourself with truth in everyday life. I wanna see if there's a kid who can think of how can I use truth in everyday life? Does anybody have an answer? Hmm, I'm looking, I'm looking. Okay, what's an example? Yeah. Being honest, yes, yes. We actually were talking about this with our son earlier today, yes. If we say, I didn't have a snack yet, because you just want more food? And there's a wrapper on the table next to you? Your parents are gonna figure it out. We wanna be honest. That's one way to have truth in our life. Grown-ups, can you shout out some examples of truth? What are some examples of truth in everyday life? Oh. <laughs> Pastor Justin just corrected all of us. <laughs> He said, actually be on your way if you say, I'm on my way. <laughs> That's an example of everyday honesty. Mm -hmm. On my way is not just a state of mind. <laughs> on my way is not the name of your hair dryer. <laughs> oh, it means I'm actually in motion. It's not the name of your driveway. Yeah, that's, that's a good one, Pastor. Appreciate that. We have to surround ourselves with truth. If we don't protect truth in our life, we aren't wearing the armor as God instructed us. And I think this is an area that we all can grow in, even in seemingly innocent ways. How can I stand firm in truth? How can I guard truth in my life? Guarding it in my thoughts, guarding it in my speech, guarding it in my commitments. How can I stand firm in truth? If we aren't standing firm, we aren't wearing our armor. And then those fiery darts that our text verse talked about are going to be able to more easily access us. They're going to be more easily able to affect us. And those fiery darts might seem small, but eventually they can take us down. Those darts are lies. This is why truth is so important. The darts that the enemy throws at us are lies. And if we aren't surrounded by truth, we might be tempted to look at that dart. Oh, I just happen to have one here. We might be tempted to look at that dart and go, yeah, I wonder if that's true. Yeah, I wonder if God does think that. Yeah, I wonder if... I'm never going to get through this. Yeah, I wonder, I wonder if this little dart is accurate, if it's true. So we have to surround ourselves with truth. Number one, stand firm in truth. Number two, stand firm in God's righteousness. Our text verse continues in verse 14. This version says, put on the body armor of righteousness. Other versions say the breastplate or the chest plate of God's righteousness. It protects our heart and our vital organs. That's really important in a fight. We want to protect the things that keep us alive, our life blood. If we don't have this armor on, we're susceptible to be wounded in a fatal way. What is righteousness? That's kind of a big word. It's a churchy word. Well, the most simple way I can explain it is righteousness is being in rightness with God. Being right with God. And again, can we do this on our own? No. If we put on our own righteousness, we're going to fail. The darts are going to get through. 
That's why the word is very clear. We have to put on God's righteousness. What does that look like? Well, we receive being right with God through our relationship with Jesus, through knowing Jesus, through receiving his blood covering our sins, through receiving his leadership in our life. To be right with God, we must be in relationship with Jesus. It's living morally as God has instructed us in the Bible so that we can live in right standing with him. Now, the opposite of righteousness or the opposite of being in right standing with God is shame. It makes it all about us. I'm not good enough. I messed up. I don't know enough. Shame makes it all about us. And shame is like a poison to our heart. Shame will break down our lifeblood and our vital organs. Shame can keep us still. Shame can even cause us to retreat and go backwards in the battle. So we have to protect ourselves from shame with those thoughts of I failed or I'm bad. Our verse is so important because again, we all fail. I regularly fail. I need Jesus every single day to be in right standing with God. The enemy is mean. Can I just say it in that so simple terms? He's mean. He's a liar. He'll do anything he can to try to take us down in this battle. And he throws darts in the battle to try to harm us. And so the fiery dart toward our heart is shame. And that might sound really different. You know, today in worship, we were talking about, I might not face Goliath, but I'm going to face my own giants in life. The darts of shame probably sound different for all of us because we all have different areas of concern in our heart. And so the enemy is very tactical. He knows, ooh, what's going to get into their heart? What's going to get into their head? What's going to trip them up? I'm going to try that. And so the dart of shame might sound like, oh, you lied, so you're a liar. God probably doesn't want to talk to you because you're a sinner. God probably is really upset with you. You better hide. You better not let anybody know about that area of sin. You better not let anyone know about that addiction. You better not let anybody know that you cheated on your taxes. You better not let anybody know. You better hide it. It's sinful. It's bad. God doesn't like it. You should retreat. Nobody wants to be around you. No one wants to see that. That's bad. You're bad. And those darts of shame are aimed toward our heart to cause us to retreat from the battle. This is why wearing that body armor of God's righteousness and reminding ourselves of who we are in Christ is so important. Because, yeah, on our own, we are all sinful. We have all failed. None of us deserve to be in right standing with God. But because of Jesus' generous sacrifice, he's the one who has the righteousness. And we can access that righteousness and say, no, nope. <laughs> oh, shame, you again. <laughs> I know that voice. But I have the righteousness of Christ Jesus, and I am in right standing with God, not because of what I've done, not because of my perfection, not because of my good works, but because of Jesus and his good works. Jesus has set me free. Jesus has given me access to God's righteousness. It is because of Jesus I can be in rightness with God. The third way we stand firm is in the gospel of peace. Stand firm in the gospel of peace. The next part of our verse in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 15, says to put on the shoes of the peace that comes from the good news so that you will be fully prepared. So this isn't just shoes of peace. Like, oh, I feel peaceful. I feel calm. I did my stretches today. Like, it's not just peace. It's peace that comes from the good news. Peace that comes from the gospel. Peace that comes from knowing the word of God. That's so important because in our world, there is so much anxiety. There's so many reasons to be distraught. But we have to know what the Bible says so that we as believers can walk in peace. Doesn't mean we turn a blind eye to current events doesn't mean we don't pray for world leaders and, and things of that nature, but it does mean 
that we don't let ourselves spiral into anxiety about what's going on in the world because we know what's happening. We know how our Savior is reigning supreme. We know how God is going to redeem all things. Amen? As believers, we can have access to a certain type of peace that people without the armor don't have access to. And that comes from knowing the word of God. Have you ever been barefoot before? And maybe you saw the terrain ahead of you and you go, you know, I'm going to stay right over here. Like, I don't want to step on that gravel. I don't want to step on that spiky thing in the woods. I don't know what those stickers, burrs. Yeah, whatever. I don't want to get cut. I don't want to be uncomfortable. I don't want my feet to hurt. Well, shoes are designed to protect us from the elements. You know, this summer, our family went on a vacation to Yellowstone. We got to hike these huge western mountains. I've grown up in Florida my whole life, so my idea of a mountain is like Claremont, where like <laughs> you ride your bike down a hill and you don't have to pedal. Like, woo! But these huge mountains had such varying terrains. We were there the first week of June, and when we went high up enough in the mountains, there was snow. We saw snow every single day. My son hit me with a snowball every single day of our trip in June. It was like mind blowing. But it was so cool because there was so many different terrains. There was some gravelly pieces with really small rocks. There was mud on a day that it was rainy. There was snow. There was rocky terrain, there was sand, there was a boardwalk in a few places, that was nice. There was all these different elements, and we had to buy hiking boots before we went, because again, Florida people, the sneakers weren't gonna cut it. And so the hiking boots have a really thick sole, and they have a guard that goes up over your ankle, so you can't accidentally roll your ankle. And walking through all those different terrains, we walked over really hot fissures, we walked through cold water, we walked through snow. I was never worried about hurting my feet at all because I had my hiking boots on. And I think it's funny because at the time, was I thinking at all about my feet? No, I was going through the hikes, some of them were hard, some of them were beautiful and fun. I was focused in the moment because I didn't have to worry about my feet. What a beautiful example that when we know who we are in God, when we know what the word promises for us, we don't have to worry about certain things because we're protected. We have the armor on and our feet are protected. So we want to be mindful of that. Peace holds us through storms. Current events don't have to rob our peace. Nightmares don't have to rob our peace. The what ifs of life don't have to rob our peace. We can put on the armor of God. So the the darts that are aimed toward our feet, that are aimed toward our peace, represent fear and worry. And the purpose of those darts is to keep us from moving forward. The purpose of the darts toward our feet are to keep us from standing still. And again, these darts might sound different for each of us, but some of them might sound like, oh, what if they don't like what I have to say, so I'm just not going to say anything? I'm just going to be silent. Oh, I'm nervous to share the gospel with this person at the gas station, because what if they think I'm crazy, so I'm just not going to say anything. Oh, I'm nervous to ask this thing from my boss, because it might not go well, so I just won't move. I'll, I'll, just, I'll just figure it out. Figure it out in my own strength. Oh, what if it doesn't go well at my audition or my job interview? Maybe I shouldn't go. Maybe I should cancel. The darts aimed toward our feet are to try to keep us still. So we have to protect ourselves with the gospel of peace. The fourth one, stand firm in faith and salvation. Ephesians 6, verses 16 through 17 address this. So all my kids in the room, can I see you put on some helmets? Do some sound effects. There we go. Okay. All right. Hold up the shield of faith to stop the fiery arrows of the devil and put on the helmet of salvation, the salvation of your helmet. So these 
um, these really help us because it's difficult to stand firm when our minds aren't clear. If you're in a brain fog, um, if you're feeling dizzy, it can be hard to stand firm because we're being taken over. We have to protect ourselves through faith. Fiery darts toward our mind represent doubt. Did God really say? Is everything really going to work out okay? What happens if this financial thing doesn't come through? What's going to happen to us? I don't know. And fiery darts to our mind about doubt about God, doubt about ourself, doubt about our place in community and our value. And so that might sound like, oh, you don't really have any friends. doesn't seem like anyone cares about you. Your situation's not changing, so is God even hearing your prayers? Does God care? You must be so lonely. You don't have anyone to turn to. And those darts of doubt cause fog in our mind so we can't see things clearly. To protect ourselves, we hold up the shield of faith that says, wait, 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 no, no, no. I know who my God is. I know the circumstances might not look good, but I choose to believe what the word of God says. I know sometimes I struggle with loneliness, but I know I am saved. I am adopted into the family of God. I have a place. I am a child of God. I'm not alone. I think sometimes it's hard to clap to because we really struggle with some of these darts, right? We have to remind ourselves what the truth is. That's how we put the armor on and how we keep the armor on. And finally, number five, stand firm in the word and prayer. That's from Ephesians 6, 18. This is the sword of the spirit. And our text scripture says to pray continually. The sword is the word of God. And pray continually for all things, in all circumstances, on all occasions, and for all believers. Prayer and the word are some of our most powerful offensive weapons. We can use them to take out the darts that the enemy throws our way. This is how we learn who God is, by studying the word. And the word and prayer helps us remind ourselves of who God is and of who his character is, what his good plans are for us, even amidst difficulties. So I want to encourage you, and this is kind of a quick assessment. Where am I? Pray alone. Do you pray when you're by yourself? Ooh, yeah, I love hearing some yes. It was rhetorical, but I love the interaction. Yeah, let's make it. Do you pray by yourself? Do you pray with your family? Do you pray with your friends? Do you pray for your community? Do you pray for your church? What a beautiful kind of litmus test. Again, not to shame us for what we aren't doing, but to call us higher on how to use our sword. Am I praying for all things on all occasions? Am I praying when things not just are bad, but am I praying when things are good? Am I praying prayers of request and also prayers of gratitude? Am I praying for refinement and growth? Oh, those are hard. Am I praying in all things? Am I praying the word of God? Am I declaring scriptures over my life and over my family? Do I pray with my kids? Kids, do I pray with my parents? These are all opportunities for us to pray more because the fiery darts are all around us. They're aimed in every direction because the enemy just wants to get something in that's going to take us down. And some fiery darts, there's so many of what these can sound like. But I think a really common one is so many bad things are happening. There's just so much trouble all around me. There's nothing I can do about it. And we can get into that posture of fear and anxiety and retreat and freeze and stuckness. But we have to remind ourselves, wait, I have the weapons of the word and I have the weapons of prayer and I can do something about this. I'm going to invite some helpers up to demonstrate what this looks like, wearing the armor of God. So Malachi and Selah, will you guys join me up here? Can you guys give them a hand? How are you feeling? Good. Sailor, are you ready to put on the armor? Yes. yes. Okay, will you guys stand right over there? 
we're going to talk through some examples. We talked through some examples of what it might look like if we don't have the armor on. But now we're going to talk through some examples of what it looks like when the darts come our way and we are wearing the armor of God. So the first one, the body armor of God's righteousness to protect our heart. The fiery dart to our heart might sound like, you lied, so you're a liar. You're bad. God probably doesn't want to talk to you because of your sin. So you probably should just try to hide I can talk to God about anything because he loves me. Let's go. So that comes from 2 Corinthians 5.21. God made him, Jesus, who had no sin, to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. We have to know the word to put on the armor. We have to know the word to wear the armor. Next is the shoes of peace from the gospel. And the fiery dart to our feet represents fear and worry. And so that might sound like, what if something bad happens at your dance audition? You probably shouldn't go. Jesus gives me peace because there's trouble in the world, but he has overcome the world. Yes, ma'am. That's right. This is a promise that Jesus made to us as his disciples in John 16, I have told you all of this. There are troubles in the world. There are legitimately concerning things, but we can have peace because Jesus has overcome the world. That's where we put our hope. That's what protects us. We can keep moving forward. Okay, next we have the shield of faith and the helmet of salvation to protect our mind from the fiery darts of doubt. And that might sound like, mm, your friends probably don't care about you. God is so far away, he might not even hear your prayers. So does he even care about you? You must feel so lonely. Jesus is always with me so I don't have to face anything alone. That's right. Jesus promised us in Matthew 28, 20, that he will be with us always, even until the very end of the age. And finally, the sword of the spirit, the word and prayer. This protects us from the fiery darts all around us. And those fiery darts might sound like so many bad things are happening and there's nothing I can do about it. My Bible says my prayers I pray are powerful. Yes, ma'am. James 5.16, the prayers of a righteous person have great power and produce wonderful results. Can we thank our actor and actress up here? We have to know the word to use the word. We have to use the word to live the word. And so we all have opportunities to know the word better, to know God's character better, to know his heart. Putting on the armor doesn't mean you won't face any battles and that life will just be easy. Putting on the armor means you can face the battles stronger and with God rather than trying to do it on your own and figure it out alone. Picture yourself with bigger spiritual muscles. Picture yourself with more faith. What would be different in your home? What would be different in our church? What would be different in our community if we were all really strong in wearing the armor every single day? I think that's a beautiful picture and something that God invites all of us into today. Well, it all starts by putting on that helmet of salvation. That's how we get to know Jesus. It's how we receive Jesus's invitation to know God, to be adopted into the family, to put on all the other pieces of armor. It's faith, it's salvation in him. And Jesus freely gave his life. He freely chose to become sin for us because sin needed to be paid for and he knew we couldn't afford it. He chose to pay the debt and invite us in to receive his salvation, to become part of the family of God. So I wanna pray with those Perhaps you've never thought, what does it look like to surrender my life to Jesus? What does it look like to actually live in salvation, 
to live in God's goodness and grace and love and generosity, to live with his peace that can surround me, what does that look like? Well, this is an invitation. The Bible says if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. It's so clear. It sounds so easy. And in some ways it is. We just have to receive. We just have to believe. We just have to confess. But what's beautiful is even on the days when it's hard to remind ourselves, we have the armor to protect us and we have the word to remind us of who God is, no matter what life looks like. So I'm gonna ask everyone to close your eyes and bow your heads. And if you would like to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, would you just slip your hand up in the air high enough so I can see who I'm praying with? I'm so honored that God has given us this opportunity to get to know him, to receive his goodness. I see hands in every section. If you're watching online, you can type in the chat, I need Jesus. Would everyone in the room pray together with me? Dear God, I recognize that I'm a sinner and I need salvation. Yes, I wanna be saved for eternity, but I wanna live a life of wholeness with you. I receive your gift of salvation. I receive your word to help me put on the armor. Thank you for your free gift Thank you for adopting me, for allowing me to be your child. From this day forward, I will live Jesus first and Jesus always. Thank you for being with me. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. This concludes the teaching. If you'd like to support what God is doing here at City of Life, click on the Give button at www.col.tv or text a dollar amount to the number 855-997-6900. We hope you'll join us again.